I'm a bit passionate about the services I'm delivering to my clients. And uh, the thing is that I always try to be in the regulations what we have written in book. Apart from this, I always try to give something new uh, which will fetch the technology, the quality of the architecture, and the space. And this is always like that. And for, for me, the type of architecture I used to do is mostly commercial buildings or shopping malls or hotels. I don't deal with uh, low-key projects, all are mostly high-tech projects which are hermetically controlled. There are a lot of electromechanical issues. So I used to address all those things and the major thing I try to uh, do is I try to bring all, all the uh, partners at stake together so that the final product comes out in a harmonious manner. So this is one thing. And considering Dhaka, it's always painful working over here because each and every time we are destroying the places mm -hmm. by means of architecture. Maybe for me it's a piece of art, but to nature it's something I'm nailing into it. So we have to be very careful. I try to be careful. At the initial days, uh, we were not that much aware of the sustainability issues which is hampering the uh, adjacent neighborhood or taking away a lot of energies. But nowadays we try uh, to incorporate all those things which will not hamper that much the neighborhood, particularly the human humanity. So this is my concern uh, of today's architecture. Being uh, an architect for this sort of uh, modern buildings, I had to compromise in both ways. I had to compromise some part to destroy uh, the nature and to bring in this new building. This is, this is the responsibility of the architect uh, to handle both of them. You have to have your building over there. You have to match with the economy for sure. Uh, it's, uh, if we consider that architecture is not mere a piece of art, it's, uh, it's some, for somebody it's bringing in money. It's some, for somebody it's a place for living. So in my opinion, the architect is the, is the right person who can handle these issues. And uh, the fortunate thing is that our clients are also taking this in positive manner. So they are also aware of the sustainability issues. So when we uh, used to tell them these are the potentials you have when you put some more money at the initial stage and in the operational uh, uh, life of this building you save this much of amount. So then they accept, then they accept because the amount they need to invest is uh, very small. But in on other hand, the responsibility of the architect when he starts designing the very first designing lines that should uh, should be done in such a manner so that at the end of the day the architecture itself without any help any source of help uh, external means can act sustain sustainability so this is one thing now i told you that earlier we were not that much aware of the sustainability issues we used to put a lot of glasses facing waste or waste reflective glasses hampering others with the reflections, making the ambient temperature a bit higher. Nowadays, I try uh, to incorporate the sustainability in its form. Mm. So first step is that. To me, the whole globe is one village. Till to date, I believe. Uh, in many cases, we don't consider this sort of uh, things, like the cars we're using, everything, air conditioner, I have told you, everyone who is designing, considering the local context and everything would be sitting in, inside an air conditioned building. So this sort of thing, I'm, I'm a bit very straightforward about it, that I believe that one day this whole globe would be, uh, culture is there, culture is there. If you consider particularly the building, I don't find any route doing a high-rise building, where should this route be? When I'm designing a house or when I'm designing an apartment, obviously the essence of that uh, particular structure of that house has been derived from my origin, my courtyard, and we have those, those things, and gradually that has been derived into a modern living. We are at the transition. We have to take the uh, 
western style we have to accommodate our local values as well so we're designing this house but when you consider a bay office building i'm designing it's very difficult it's very difficult to root it to what we had in our uh, earlier stages in architecture to me the urbanization has started how many years back in this country which is the oldest building 100 years 150 years old and those are not our architecture those are colonial architectures we have so it's very difficult to make a mud high rise building i am very straightforward i am very much open to accommodate anything coming new whether it is from any any part of the world and as well as i need to address the present first having some it's like a looking mirror in a, in your car you look forward but sometimes you need to see back as well to link with the past for me and tanya when we started our practice uh, it was a very interesting time why i say it was a very interesting time is because we have to understand one thing none of us can work beyond our time we exist in time in a particular part of time i cannot exist before my time i will not exist after my time so everything during my time has influence on me and the more honest we are to that influence and the more honest that we are to our time i think will bring out uh, a expression which is uh, truly us and then it will be new uh, as we studied architecture and we traveled in the region is our great love for mogal architecture and i think that is something that allowed us to look at our the architecture of our region in a different way where it was a wonderful uh, interplay of built form landscape uh, monumentality expression thought and form so uh, it it this whole mix of things had had a great influence on us also but the most important thing is exactly when we were graduating at that time the great exhibition of the deconstructivists took place and that was the event of our time because none of the other things were really events of our time there were two things that we will consider one was the aga khan Uh, influence on uh, on this part of the world in terms of regionalism memar and all that that definitely was a strong influence but exactly when we were graduating these uh, you know group of mm-hmm. deconstructivists did their exhibition the book came architecture in transition that book came out and it blew our mind for us that uh, deconstructivist uh, exhibition uh, brought to us i think a mental freedom a way to escape the pressures of postmodernism and regionalism and all that and we we took that uh, force uh, to uh, become a part of our work and and then when we started our initial work we we our work was a kind of i would say it was a question they were all like inquiries is that here i'm giving you a work which is different in form different in style maybe even looks uh, some kind of uh, post structuralist but is it sensitive to landscape is it sensitive to uh, our country is it sensitive to our socio economic condition is it con- sensitive to architectural uh, you know past of our country and elements of architecture that will ground it to its context so uh we try to in our work kind of create that question and that tension because we we thought is that creating obvious answers was for us not challenging enough i mean everybody can create obvious answer or obvious response but you wanted to create this tension between what we think and what we know and what is true and when we were creating i think our work is uh, is always doing that it is always creating these uh, tensions between form style expression and what we are actually trying to do the experience the la- the connection with landscape the connection with our architectural past and 
the creating that tension i think is our way of trying to um, uh, show that architecture does not need to follow uh, a, a, a typology or a style. We, we have come to a point in, in time in this world where uh, our expressions has to be uh, more creative to take our ideologies and our ethics forward. I think we can find answers to the way we want to, what we want to express in architecture. And that does not need to be the standard set of answers. And that is where I think we try to look at our work. Our work has always been disturbing. We like to keep it that way. We like to think that me and that both me and Tanya like to think we almost just graduated yesterday. We are full with the, uh, the wonder of architecture, with the appreciation of architecture, and we would want to carry on our work in this very inquiring way that we do our work. Who we are is uh, what our land has made us. Uh, is, this is uh, it's not only the landform, the water, the trees, but also our seasons, our climate, all of them has made us in a particular way. When we say it makes us, is that all of these elements influence our literature, it influences our poetry, it influences our music. So they influence us, it influences our art, those art influence us. So when we are a part of this collective whole, which is influenced by where we are, then I think that our architecture will be a part of this whole collective body of art, uh, architecture, literature, music, songs, and then it will belong. It will not belong is just because we're attempting to make it regional, regional or giving it regionalistic qualities. In order to make it belong, I think the most powerful thing is that it needs to grew out of the land. The fact that I, I decided to practice or base my practice in Bangladesh and not to move anywhere else, uh, it was very important for me to, uh, from the very beginning, to find a language of architecture. It doesn't need to be a language which, is, which I carry on in every single project because every project that I do are quite different quite unique based on the kind of program or the site that I'm working on. Um, but there is an inherent uh, understanding of the land, of the climate that we are in. So uh, I'm quite aware and conscious about the position where I'm in, uh, of the location where I am practicing. Uh, Bangladesh, as you know, is a delta uh, in, in the tropics and there are certain ways the climate behaves, the land is soft and fluid in a way. Um, so these things I'm quite aware of. I'm also aware of the fact of the materials that are available and I'm always trying to use locally available materials uh, because most of my projects are very, uh, very modestly budgeted so you need to be aware of what kind of materials you're using. So, and all these things actually come out of this uh, consciousness of uh, looting my work to the site. And the other thing I'm quite conscious about is the history. I try to be as much, uh, I try to be aware of history as much as possible. Um, every project that I'm working on, uh, it could be the history of the land, history of the overall country or the location, but it's always, there is a sense of history that you'll find. It's not something that I bring from anywhere else and put it on the site, but I believe that architecture needs to grow from the site. It's almost like a plant that it grows from the site, and for that reason you need to understand the location and the culture and the history. So that's, that's important for me. Uh, in every case, I think uh, what what is important for me is to see, uh, as I said, the tropicality, the breathability of a building, which I think we have in our context, most of us architects have kept that in mind, that your building needs to be 
ventilated, but naturally ventilated. But natural ventilation, just putting some windows is not good enough for me. I'm always trying to create a language out of that. So it could be the wall turning into a breathing wall, or it could be the form, or the way I'm, I'm creating the approaches in a way that it turns into a kind of a design by itself. The form turns into something or the wall turns into something. So there is this idea of turning everything into a breathing mechanism. And it, it's not just a window and a building and a wall, but overall it's, a, it's something that, that creates this breathing effect. I'm, I'm, quite a, I'm quite aware of the materials that I work with. And you've seen the way we work with brick. Brick can be a solid facade, uh, turning into one, one element. Or brick can be just uh, smaller elements that are coming together in a certain weaving pattern that it turns into a breathing wall. But whatever it is, it's always the breath breathability of this uh, material is very important to me. And I think even with concrete or brick, whatever I'm using as a material, that breathingness of a building uh, that I always keep in mind so that the building can work on its own especially in a country like Bangladesh where we have such tremendous shortage of electricity or power failures, building must work on its own. We cannot depend on air conditioning or any kind of artificial way of uh, working with it. So yeah, that's, that's important. I love designing public spaces and I'm longing for <laughs> projects that are, has something to do with public. Even when I'm doing an apartment, I'm trying to place a facade which is a public facade, you know. So that thing is already there. Unfortunately, we don't get to do many public projects because the government doesn't, I mean, until we have an, uh, uh, a competition or something, otherwise it's very difficult to get a public project. But whenever I get a chance, like a mosque or a community center or even a resort which has certain kind of publicness, I'm trying to uh, take these projects and, and work with it. Because I like the, this uh, action and interaction that people do. I think one interesting thing that I can share with you is the first time people started moving into the museum, the Liberation War Museum, the Independence Museum. So when, uh, I mean, the building has been there for maybe 10, 15 years, constructed, but it was not inhabited by public. But the first time when I saw people coming down those ramps, that's the first time I felt that the building is complete. And, and I think that's, that's important, how you, you design a building in a certain way. People come and they start using it or dwelling in it or inhibiting it in a certain way. And that's quite interesting as, a, as an experience and I enjoy that. So. That was a challenge in the beginning because when I went to the site, it has been a dilemma because I went to the site, the site has a presence, has a dynamics which is very delta, very farmland and it has nothing to do with the kind of architecture we do in the urban areas, let's say in Dhaka or anywhere and, and the way I was taught architecture, let's say, very hardcore modernistic or postmodern senses. And when I went there and I saw this very pristine village, uh, it, it just seemed that it would be a crime to take this roaring noise of architecture to that pristine area and to, to create something that absolutely destroys this, uh, this beautiful uh, dynamics that exists in that location. So, the, so I, I thought about it a lot with the client and also in my office with my architects. And then finally what we came up with is let's go to the site, let's learn from the site, Let's learn from the wisdom that is there in the land and create something, you know, trying to become an architect again, in a way. Uh, so, so we went to the land, we talked to the people, we uh, learned about their construction techniques, the materials, mud, bamboo, thatch, how they are constructed. And in a way, when we went to the site, the people in the, in the, look, I mean, uh, in the villages, they thought we will turn their village into a city. And they were quite excited about it. Well, now we will have some 10-story building or something. But then when they saw that we are asking them about their mud houses, well, this is something very cheap, you know, we are poor people. I said, what are you talking about? Poor people? But this is what we like, you know, this is beautiful. And then, you know, in a way, bringing pride back into their, 
whatever their belong their, their belongings, what has been there in the uh, in, in the place for so many hundreds of years. So uh, in a way, working to revive the pride that is there in the land, and I thought that it would be interesting to just you know learn from them, or even to employ them, uh, engage them in a certain way that they start building this whole resort and not us. So if you see the master plan, it's a very contemporary master plan with the river kind of uh, walkways and patterns and even the restaurants and things, but done in mud. But at the same time, you know, letting them uh, do the construction. So there are a lot of interesting things that are coming up that was not there in the plan in the first place, but it's there incorporated. So in a way, it's a, it's a, it's a partnership between the locals and us. And I think that's what makes it interesting.